The African lion is a renowned apex predator that rightly rules as the king of the jungle. This legendary predator is the most feared presence on the African savanna, and no one is safe when a pride is on the prowl. However, if we hit the rewind button and go back 65 million years ago, we'll find that the Earth was under a totally different monarchy, the dinosaurs. Which begs the question, how would lions have fared if they were around back then? Would they dominate the food chain? Or would they be someone's quick snack? Let's find out, shall we? The Modern Lion Kingdom Lions, Panthera leo, are found in Africa and parts of India. In Africa, they range from the southern edges of the Sahara all the way to South Africa. They live on the open savanna, in sparse woodlands, in montane grasslands. They are now extinct in North Africa. In India, they live in the plains and scrub forests of the Gur National Park in Gujarat. Although known colloquially as the king of beasts, lions are actually the second largest extant species in the cat family behind the tiger. This regal tag is likely a result of the crown-like mane that adorns the head of the males. This feature has seen the lion adopted as a symbol of strength, leadership, and nobility by individuals, families, and institutions for centuries. Another unique quality about lions is their social system. Unlike other cats, lions are highly sociable and live in groups called prides. Lion prides can range from three lions to 40. In the strict sense of the term, a pride is a group of two or more females under the leadership of at least one dominant male. Prides can be headed by up to four males. Lions rely on pride life to help maintain their territories, protect cubs, and tackle large prey. Given the competitive environment in which they live, there is safety in numbers. African lions, in particular, live among animals that are either too big or too fast to be caught by an individual on a reliable basis. Cape buffalo, giraffe, zebra, wildebeest, and even elephants are typical prey animals for large prides. Numbers allow lions to employ various strategies to tackle different animals. For fast prey like zebra and impala, a few lions will herd the victims towards an ambush of pride members hiding in tall grass. For big prey like buffalo, they will identify weak or injured individuals and surround them. The lions will then jump onto the animal's back and weigh it down, sometimes taking turns to do so. Once the prey is on the ground, one of the pride members will clamp jaws around the prey's windpipe and deliver death by suffocation. Lions generally kill animals first before eating. In most prides, females do most of the hunting because their maneless bodies are better for blending in the plains when stalking. Males will generally help out when the pride is hunting especially large animals like buffalo and giraffes. The typical role of male lions is to stay back and guard the cubs when females go hunting. They also enforce territorial boundaries. A male lion will patrol the pride territory for days at a time, applying scent markings and broadcasting warning roars to would-be invaders. The spray markings communicate a pride male's age and strength to other males, who then decide whether invasion is wise. Both male and female cubs grow up under the protection of the family. Depending on the region, lions grow up in environments with predatory creatures like hyenas, leopards, wolves, tigers, bears, and jackals. Even herbivorous animals like buffalo, giraffe, rhinoceros, elephants, and hippopotamus will not hesitate to kill lion cubs. Cubs spend their early months developing motor and coordination skills through play. At around six to eight months, they begin to tag along on hunts so they can watch and learn. By the age of two, they can hunt small prey on their own or make decisive contributions to the pride's big hunts. Around the age of three, young males are evicted by their fathers and begin their lives as nomads. Young females may move to neighboring prides or join up with wandering males to carve new territories elsewhere. Young males from the same pride may team up and form coalitions to increase their chances of surviving without the pride's protection. Coalitions may also form between unrelated males. Nomads roam in the wilds trying to avoid territorial pride males until they are ready to challenge for a pride. If nomadic males survive the wilds, they eventually look for pride males to battle. Lion fights are brutal affairs, and some can result in mutilation or even death. If an incumbent male wins, the invading nomads are driven out or killed. If the incumbent loses, he is chased away or killed. If new males take over a pride, they immediately commit infanticide on the pride's young cubs. 
This cuts off the ousted male's genes and forces the pride females into oestrus. Of course, the mothers don't just sit idly by while their babies are slaughtered. In some cases, females can gang up on a new nomad to protect their cubs, even going as far as driving him away and leaving the pride without a dominant male. However, cub killing attempts are usually successful, especially if the pride is taken over by a coalition of multiple males. The Cretaceous Period Landscape between 145 million to 65 million years ago, the world was in a geological period known as the Cretaceous. At 80 million years, the Cretaceous period is also longest subperiod of the Earth's Phanerozoic Eon. Expert analysis of fossil records and other data indicates that the Cretaceous had warm global temperatures. Sea levels were much higher, and there was less land mass than today. Generally, seasons around the world varied from warm and dry, warm and wet as well as cool and dry. However, the specific distribution of these weather patterns likely differed across regions. Naturally, the climate had a direct influence on the kind of flora and fauna that thrived at the time. As far as flora, the vegetation was mostly made up of non-fruiting gymnosperm plant groups like conifers and cycads. This is in stark contrast to today, where most plants are fruit-bearing angiosperms like grasses, aquatic plants, and many broadleaf tree species. There was also a whole host of animals too. These ranged from insects, amphibians, fish, birds, and even early mammals like the platypus. However, reptiles were by far the most dominant animal group. Snakes, lizards, crocodiles, and of course, dinosaurs were usually at the top of most of the world's food chains during this time. Dinosaurs ranged from the size of small rodents to more than the size of several buses. Herbivores like the Titanosaurs could grow to nearly 70 metric tons. Carnivores like the Tyrannosaurus rex and Spinosaurus were the largest predators to ever walk the earth. How would lions fare? It's difficult to gauge how lions would survive in the Cretaceous given that the environment did not have carnivorous mammals of that size. The largest Mesozoic mammal on record is Repinomimus robustus, an animal that would be the size of a modern-day opossum. Paleontologists believe that it preyed on young or very small dinosaurs and largely spent its days hiding away from the endless predators that were above it in the food chain. To survive in this environment, lions would need prey large enough to support their bulk and numbers in a pride. Herbivorous dinosaurs like Orctodromius, Othnelia, and Micropachycephalosaurus are a few examples of small to medium animals that would be in a lion pride's ideal size range. Picking off young and weak individuals would also be an option, as would scavenging. Lions would also need large territories and open grasslands, which weren't as plentiful as they are now. The Cretaceous period was dominated by swampy marshes and woodlands that lions don't really prefer. However, lions could quickly adapt, much like the famous swamp lions that thrive in the marshy wilds of Botswana's Okavango Delta. One area where lions wouldn't adapt as easily is the food chain. Adult lions are apex predators in their modern-day domains, fearing nothing apart from humans. In the Cretaceous, though, things would be very different. Besides the multi-ton T-Rexes and Spinosaurs, the Cretaceous teemed with a wide range of nasty predatory animals. From giant crocodiles to massive snakes as well formidable dinosaurs like Carnotaurus, Velociraptors, Abelosaurids, and Tarbosaurus, and a whole lot more. Lions would definitely not be kings of anything here. Most of the aforementioned reptiles would make light work of even the biggest lions, let alone their vulnerable prides. Another issue is how social lions would be in the Cretaceous. On one hand, lions have evolved to thrive in a pride setting. They rely on each other to raise cubs and find suitable food. However, living in large numbers would also attract unwanted attention from giant predators. A solitary life would help adult lions keep a low profile, but that would come with the compromise of the range of prey they could target. All in all, it seems pretty clear that lions, as we know them today, would not fit in seamlessly in this age of reptiles. As history shows, it wasn't until the great extinction wiped out the dinosaurs that mammals would get the chance to rule the earth. Conclusion. On that note, we've come to the end. Thank you for watching, and we hope you like and share the video to help grow the channel. Please take the time to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to stay up to date with more awesome animal content. Bye bye.